Today, I'm talking about slow motion footage and how you do it properly so that your footage looks epic. One thing before we get into doing proper slow motion, as you noticed, there was a different intro and it was going into the Creator Film School, which is actually something that I'm working on right now. And this is kind of a preview, preview launch. I don't know what you necessarily call it, but I'm building a film school. It's gonna be nuts to bolts, everything that you need to know to have a career as a filmmaker and a creator. I moved down to LA in 2006. I went to film school for four years. After that, I freelanced for a while. I met my wife. We started our production company about five years ago, and we've had a lot of success having a production company and just building our clients up. So what I'm doing is I'm putting all of my information that I've learned over the years, all my mistakes that I've made, everything that has gotten me to this point now into a online school so that you guys can get up and running and make a career out of filmmaking. Also for anyone who just wants to get better at filmmaking and just learn cameras and learn how all of this stuff works, there's just gonna be a ton of info in there. So guys, there's a link down below to the pre-launch where you can sign up if you wanna get notifications for when it's ready. So make sure you go in there and don't miss the email updates. Okay, slow motion. We're talking slow motion, how you do it properly. I actually got this question from Lindsay and Alex. They're the ones I did the last video with. They are traveling the world. So what I thought would be a great idea is take their question and make it into a video. So how do you do proper slow motion? It all starts with your camera and what frame rates you're shooting at in your camera. But before we get into high frame rates, what we're gonna talk about is how a camera works in general. So you have a number of frames per second that you shoot at when you're shooting video. So with a still, you're just taking one still. Click, that's one image. For video, you're actually taking 30 images or 24 images every second. And when you put those next to each other, that gives you video, that gives you footage. So 24 frames per second means that you are shooting 24 images per second. Okay, that is the standard for Hollywood cinema. That is pretty much what everyone wants to do to get that cinematic look is 24 frames per second. I also shoot a lot of my stuff at 30 frames per second because the motion is a little bit smoother. And for me, for my production company, when I'm shooting fitness videos, I like to have that smoother look. I don't like the 24 look. So I jump between both 24 and 30 depending on what project I'm working on. So for the context of this video, we're gonna talk about 30 frames per second just because the math is a little bit easier to understand when we talk about high frame rates. Okay, so we're shooting at 30 frames per second. That is what our editing timeline will be in our editing software. So when you want to shoot slow motion, what you need to do is shoot at a higher frame rate than 30 frames a second. So for example, if you're shooting at 60 frames a second and you play that back at 30 frames per second, it's gonna be at half speed. So one second at 60 frames per second gets stretched out to two seconds at 30 frames per second and that gives you slow motion, half speed footage. So it all depends on what frame rate you're shooting at in your camera. Now there's two different ways that you're gonna see the ability to do slow motion in your cameras. Let's talk about both of those real quick. The first is shooting at a frame rate and then it's going to give you a file that is at that frame rate. So in my Sony RX100, you have a few different options. You have 60, you have 30, you have 24, and you have 120. And these are in your frame rate settings. So we're gonna choose 120 because that is the most amount of frames that you can shoot per second with this camera in this setting. So we're gonna click 120 frames per second. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna shoot a quick little sequence and when we play it back in our editing software, because the file is 120 frame per second file, it's gonna play back in real time. So this is where it gets confusing for people because they might drop this clip into the timeline and be like, I shot at 120 frames per second, but it looks like it's real time, it's not slow motion. Well, what you have to do is, with cameras that don't do internal slow motion, so they're basically shooting at high frame rates, but they're playing back at those same high frame rates. So what you have to do is manually adjust the footage in post. So this is easy in Final Cut Pro. Let's go into Final Cut and I'll show you how to do this real quick. Basically, you have to start with your 30p timeline or your 24 if you're doing that, you drop your footage into the timeline, you're gonna hit Command R, which is gonna bring up your retime menu for this clip. Now when you click in here, you can go to your custom, hit automatic, and what Final Cut does is it manually stretches the footage so that there's one frame per second on a 30 frame per second timeline. 
So at 120 frame per second clip that you shot, it's gonna be four times slower on a 30 frame per second timeline. And that's because if you take 120, divide it by 30, that gives you four. So it's four times slower because you're shooting four times the amount of frames every second that you would on a normal 30 frame per second timeline. Are you guys following me? Is, am I losing you yet? I know it's a lot of numbers and a lot of math going on here, but it's pretty basic. It's pretty easy to follow once you start playing with this and getting it. So if you need to do this manually, what you'll do is just do the math and you'll slow it down four times or 25% that of the original clip. And you can do this in any editing software. Just look for your settings on how to retime your footage. Let's go into the second way that you're going to be able to shoot slow motion in your camera. So for example, with the GH5, I have an option called variable frame rate. And so what that does is it allows me to shoot at these higher frame rates and then it auto stretches the footage so that when it's played back, it already looks like slow motion. So with the GH5, I have the option to shoot 100 frames per second slow motion. However, when you go into your frame rate settings, you will see that there is no option for 180 frames per second. That's because when you're working with a camera that shoots these variable frame rate options, you, what you need to do is first select your ending footage that you want. So for example, on this, we want HD footage 1080p at 30 frames per second. So we're gonna click that setting. Now we're gonna go into our menu and find the option for variable frame rate. And what you do here is you're gonna turn on variable frame rate and set the frame rate that you wanna shoot at. So what your camera is automatically doing is it's shooting at 180 frames per second and then it's gonna play it back at 30 frames per second so it's automatically slowed down. So now when we go into Final Cut and we drop this clip into the timeline, you don't have to do anything. It's already at the proper slow motion. So those are the two ways that you get slow motion out of a camera. Now let's talk about one of the biggest pitfalls about slow motion and one of the things that's going to give you awful looking footage. So if you're not shooting at a high frame rate, say you're shooting at 30 frames per second and you want that shot slow down so it's slow motion. Well, what you might think you wanna do is just make it half speed or quarter speed, but all you're doing is stretching the footage. And if you only have 30 images within a second and you're trying to stretch that to two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, what's happening is there's gaps in between each shot and your editing software is going to try and fill in those gaps. Well, there's nothing to fill it in, so it's just gonna duplicate the frames before and after each shot. So what happens is your footage ends up just becoming really choppy because your 30 images that should be playing back in one second are now playing back in four seconds. So for four seconds, you're gonna have four of the same shot over and over, and it's gonna give you really choppy looking footage. So you can't take footage that's shot at 24 or 30 and stretch it out longer to get slow motion. It just doesn't look right. You need to have a high frame rate option in your camera. Now, a lot of cameras will only shoot at 60 frames per second, which will give you half speed, but more and more there are other options coming out. Like the GH5 shoots at 180, a lot of Sony's will shoot at 120, and then if you want specialized, super high frame rates, like thousands, that's gonna be a specific camera, and they're high frame rate cameras, and that's how you get those really cool shots of like a balloon popping very slowly, or like a bullet going through something. It's a specific special camera that are crazy expensive. So if you want the super, super slow motion look, you're gonna have to get a specialized camera for that. However, a lot of cameras will slow down to at least four times slower, which actually looks really good. That super buttery slow motion is oftentimes 120 frames per second. Now there is one piece of software called Twixter that I've worked with here and there, and what this does is it allows you to shoot at 30 frames per second, and instead of just duplicating each frame in between the two pictures that you have on your timeline, it tries to build a frame that would be like a middle ground between the two. So what Twixter is doing is it's actually making new frames out of the two frames you have on either side of, of a hole in your footage. So sometimes this works amazing and sometimes this doesn't work at all. It all depends on what's in your footage and it depends on how you shoot your footage. So if you're interested in figuring out ways to slow down your footage even slower than it's possible with the frame rates that you have, then that is an option to look at. I'll put a link down below in the description so you guys can check out that piece of software. But in general, to shoot proper slow motion, you have to shoot at a higher frame rate than what you're playing back at. So your homework right now is to go look at your camera, go see what frame rate options you have, and do a little bit of math to see how slow your footage will get 
if you shoot at these higher frame rates. So if you just have 60 frames per second, that's just the only option you have that's higher than 30 or 24, you're gonna be able to shoot half speed or a little bit more than half speed when you're playing in a 24p timeline. However, a lot of cameras out there, like I said, will be able to shoot at 120 or 240 or some of these other frame rates. So just go into your camera right now, check out your high frame rate options, shoot in every frame rate that your camera has, and also look for a variable frame rate option to see if your camera will do the frame rate conversion in camera for you. Go through, play with all the different frame rates that you have in your camera, play them back in your editing software and see what you like best. That is the best way to learn, is just to go through and play with all these different settings. All right guys, I hope that was helpful in giving you a better understanding of how to do proper slow motion. If you wanna see more tutorials like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. There's a ton of filmmaking and camera reviews on this channel. I also do a lot of adventure films and travel vlogs. And guys, like I said, my Creator Film School is coming, so make sure you go down in the description, click the link, jump on that email list because you're not gonna wanna miss it when it launches. There is a lot going into this course. I've got so much coming out for you. And guys, that is it. I will see you on the next one.